Hello there, I'm El Boydo, and welcome to From the Depths. Today, we're going to be doing a little bit of a tutorial, and this will be the start of what I hope to be a little mini-series of building a little destroyer. So to kick us off, I've got a little hole here, based on the letter destroyers that I've been making. They're pretty much based on British destroyers during the Second World War, during the Emergency Flotilla Programme. So this one I believe I've labelled the J class and this is the whole of it. So quick rundown of what we have here. Just put us all at the same spot. We have our little Ford one here, we've got a couple gun empty gun mounts, which I hope we'll put something in later on. I don't know what but we put something in there. Then we go back to the stripped main deck all the way here. Right now it's literally a hole, but there's nothing here apart from a bit of armament on the outside. The hole design is a common one for me, which if we do a little cut right here, that does not help whatsoever. <laughs> so with most of my hole designs, I like to stagger them a little bit to get this sort of effect. From afar it looks alright, unless you've got a lot of glow in the sun, from the sun, like that. So the main idea behind this is I'll place one block at the start here and as it goes down, every time there's an indent here I'll put a 2 meter slope one block behind just so it all fit in and it'll nat naturally go down. On the other side, I'll follow a trail of one block slopes then two block slopes, then two block slopes again in case I do a one block slope then a two block to make it all fit in and as I do that I'll gradually well as up here goes out I'll gradually expand the lower base so I've got a nice flat bottom to make it a bit more stable and to give me a bit more room inside for the whole ship it would use a two meter block here then a one meter block to give it a nice curve flat sides not always great but a bit of better armour these things are quite small so you know you want a bit of better armour and yeah that's the general hole design this little four bit may get cut off it's just there for the sake of it so today we're going to be looking at how to build an engine in from the depths and after building a hole which we have here that's normally the first point of well, first port of call when designing an engine you want to ask yourself several questions firstly what sort of power output do you need and well that's actually more questions so at the end result what do you want your ship to do will it fly or will it sail if you're sailing you probably need a lot less power than if you're flying then from there you ask yourself what type of armament if you and if you want shielding as the custom shields in game which I'll cover probably at a later date I hope to slowly work through every aspect of the game, but shield projectors right now all require power to do something. As you see down there, the power use goes up, the bigger and more complicated it is to being very big. So you want to keep an eye on that to be sure, you know, if you want shield and let on, you're going to need to have the power to fund it, otherwise you're going to have to choose whether you want armour or, pa or propulsion. Other bits that use power, which you need to keep in mind of, uh, resource generators like uh, ammunition processors, fuel processors, and similar components. These are pretty power hungry. They're not very power hungry on their own, but they stack up quite quickly. Other bits that we use power lasers. We'll cover them in depth later on. I'm not a master of lasers, but I know enough to get them working, and hopefully that will give you. If you're not familiar with lasers, that'll give you enough to get a couple started and find out a few tricks for yourself. So, for this, it's going to be a little destroyer. I'm thinking a couple guns, a few missiles, and maybe a bit of shielding. So, I'm not looking at a majorly powerful engine. But if you're new to from the depths, you go in. You'll have your ship here. You do what I always do. Press M. Pull every ship out of play so you get rid of these two little spawn beacon ships and when you get to building one you have a little hole and you press enter have it hover so caps lock even so you've got it hovering so you don't get the ocean making you feel ill 
and you go into build mode, you want to chuck an engine in, you look at the engine menu, go, and then you get this. Sometimes it make for some people it might make sense, others it's a mess. I don't know, when I first saw it I didn't have a clue what to do. But the tutorial helped me enough and a few other tutorials helped me, so I thought I'd make another to give you guys a hand. So I'm gonna make this quick and concise because we're already five minutes in. It and you know, you you got you got stuff to do. You don't want to hear me babbling on. So, with an engine you will always need an engine block. And that's how we start. One engine block. Right now it has nothing power in it. Oh, um also just for example's sake, we put a few storage tank. We need a few of these anyway. They'll provide fuel to your engine. You need them. They've got limit supply. Noted down here in the bottom right corner of your screen. Right now we have three thousand fuel. So you have your engine block. Off the engine block, would you oh another trick when you're building press G so you don't have to look in direction you can just hit tab and move the block like that with the WASD keys life is so much easier that way so you always want the crankshaft facing forward from the engine so we'll build a couple along here and off the crankshaft we can connect cylinders so we'll just build a few here Build a few on this side. Build one here. If you really want, there's actually another component called a left right to up connector. You connect that to your crankshaft and then we can raise the cylinders up a level so they're all on the same level. I'll show you in a later episode why this is useful. Personally, I don't like to do it and I feel, well, I used to do it a lot, but I feel it makes it a little bit more of a mess when doing certain things later on but it seems to do a trick right here so it'll give us a nice layered cake effect so on this level we will have our cylinders what you can connect here is an exhaust pipe off the cylinders or I've hit N because pressing N provides a mirror along any plane whether you want it like that or horizontally, vertically, wherever you want it makes life a lot faster so you can provide exhaust pipes. Exhaust pipes, they say here, they provide a little bit more power and fuel efficiency for your engine. They also provide smoke off your engine. They're not too, right now the engine is not too effective. It's mainly powered by this collection of cylinders we have here. So, always remember that off a cylinder, you can connect exhaust pipes. Then off the cylinder you can then connect carburetors. A carburetor is the next stage and one of the most useful components. It will provide you with well, the ability to connect superchargers and engine zone fuel tanks. So the carburetor is pretty much just a it's a conduit for the major power for your engine supply. And these can only connect to cylinder blocks, nothing else, they can't connect to cranks but we'll expand on that later what you can connect here is then either an engine zone fuel tank or a supercharger superchargers there they provide a lot of bang for your buck however they're very expensive as you see down in the bottom right corner they're super expensive to use as engine zone fuel tanks they're very cheap and provide a lot of they provide their own fuel and also they provide a lot more fuel efficiency for the fuel that they take in so let's say we've got 22 power, add one in then we've got 24 power again, so it's all always going up by 2 but you see the fuel usage, we've lowered it dramatically from what is, well, pretty, pretty low already but we've lowered it dramatically already the next stage though is superchargers you see here, there is one problem though. You need to have an engine own fuel tank and a supercharger, otherwise you'll get no benefit. But as it stands this these are the bits that connect your engine. And this is how it works. Prank engine block, crankshaft for however long you want it, 
left, right, two up connector. They literally only connect vertically for other components. Then your cylinders connect off the crank and left, right ups. Exhaust pipes and carburetors connect to cylinders. And engine on fuel tanks. So you can build an engine like this, it's pretty straightforward. However, as you get into the game, you realise that this can get very expensive and with a game like this you don't want to be wasting resources on anything you build so how can we make an engine as efficient as possible and that's simple my main technique for doing this, I mean a lot of people have other methods is taking advantage of one facet in the game so yeah we connect these two here and these two cylinders here and we connect a carburetor and if we check both of these this cylinder and this cylinder both read the same carburetor being connected which means we get a lot more power out of the engine in fact I'll just do it on one side now to demonstrate that it's got no major power though because there's not a lot in there but you see there it will soon next point we want to do is for however long this cranks off this we want an even or odd number of um, cylinders so we want them all to go up to this very end point then one on the end here then you want to follow this along all the way back and now you just fill in the dots for wherever there's a cylinder gap or wherever a cylinder can connect fill that odd place gap with a carburetor so you get if you're going along it on the bottom there cylinder, carburetor, cylinder, carburetor, cylinder, carburetor and the same for the top there do it again on the bottom to expand out for however far out you want to go but we'll keep it pretty close this time you see there we've got 18 power it's, it's not too great but this is where it gets pretty if I remove these and to show you this final one here if I connect one fuel tank we go from 18 to 23 one supercharger we go well, we stay at 18 two fuel tanks we go 28 so that's plus 10 then a fuel tank and a supercharger 28 again but it's not made power the cost of it makes it not worth it but if I do fuel two fuel tanks and one supercharger we'll get 30, 33 out of that well because I've removed that block we've now started eating two of these 23 then we go to 33 you reach a point now here where you can't really make it much better add one more fuel tank you go up by Eight to forty-one. I'd never supercharge her. You go forty-four. It's that's a trick a little bit, but I always believe in the golden ratio for these. Two fuel tanks for every cup, every single supercharger, and then you can't really go wrong. So then we just want to decorate everything. There's I can't remember which way it's best to do it, so I normally. Yeah. Place this one like that. And if you go along actually I'm keeping this free now, aren't I? You place it on every carburetor. Like that. You see we're getting a nice little bit of power. 149 already, so we dramatically improve this engine. And boom. We put another line along. And we're up to 479. So it's getting pretty damn good. Very powerful engine. But we want to, uh, you know, make that as powerful as we physically can. So up here, just to show you what I mean, we're at 479. Let's add in four superchargers. And boom. With those four, each one of these have two fuel tanks. And we've increased the fuel power, we've increased the power of the engine by about 300. So it's pretty damn good. Now, 
we have a little engine here but we don't need all that power yet so let's just keep it here right now it's very low cost and it is super it's not as pure efficient as it could be but it gets the job done pretty damn well that's what I think it is quite pure efficient there isn't it so we have our engine now for the next stage of your boat we have to add in propulsion the first law of propulsion always try and have it as level as you can to your centre of mass this little marker here if you can't see it press P you can't miss it it will always point forward to forward to your ship with that arrow and it will always that point you want that right in the middle of a block right now it's not there let's see if we can no there's not a lot I can do about that but that's pretty good for what I want so off here we want our propulsion to be as close to that as possible to get the maximum effect without sending our ship nose high or down into the depths so we'll have a little bit of a although the main problem with that is it's a little bit too low for my liking so I'm just gonna go one block lower and you'll see what I mean I always prefer using huge propellers because you just get a m massive amount of power out of them and we'll plug them into the back and once we pop up here back with Rambot we have the engine in our ship lovely in there sitting all nice and then we just press U and we're away so you see there because it's lower than the centre of mass it's pushing the nose into the air a little bit we're getting a little bit of bob from when it's bouncing but it's going 13 12 to 13 meters a second so it's flying along pretty good and the problem is we're coming up to a land mass so I've got to cut back a little bit and we've got to get something to get us out of the way before we hit the o well, that mountain over there because pro tip hitting mountains is not good for your ship so what we need here is a boat rudder with a boat rudder you always want to find the centre of mass and have it as close as you can get to the centre of mass and touching the water Thankfully, we can just place that just here. The reason why you want to do that is if it's too high, you're not going to get much turning power, and you're going to probably you know, not even touch the water. If it's too low, your ship. Oh, I'm sorry, in a minute, actually. So right now, if it's too low, so if I put it just here, that's quite a little bit below. So we're not going to see a full effect. But look at the way the ship leans I do that see there it's leaning quite a fair bit into that turn power a little bit Oop. bit the wrong way and you see there the water is coming up quite high if this raised a lot more on top because right now it's quite light it would start a happen problem some of my older ships had that problem big time so you want to have it as close as you can to your centre of mass. Now we start turning, and you see it's staying very level, turning very quickly, or reasonably quickly. If you want to turn faster, you can always have more. That's what I think we'll do. Set a couple more on here, on here. And this should mean, yeah, now we're flying. Yeah, that's right, so a very brief tutorial on how, well, it's not quite brief, it's about 20 minutes, but it's a little tutorial on how to make an efficient engine that can power your ship and look at it, it's used practically no fuel because of the amount of fuel in the engine itself. And it's powering the ship pretty damn well. I can chuck a whole lot of stuff in here and it will still be functioning pretty damn well. And as you see, no real issues. In the next episode, I reckon I'll be looking at possibly how you can compartmentalise your ship or how to add cannons. So that 
can't see yet. I'll be looking into how to make add cannons just to demonstrate how they work and how they all fit together. I hope this has been useful. Please let me know if it has in the comment section. And I've been Alboido. Take it easy, guys. And I'll see you next time. Bye for now.